How's it going guys, Vapa here and welcome to an Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max gaming test. I feel like this video is going to be similar to the iPhone 12 gaming test I did a couple of weeks ago. So if you want to check that out, make sure you do so by clicking the card above. But this is also perfect timing because not only is the Pro Max the best iPhone that you can buy, but the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 processor is also out in the flesh. So the A14 Bionic CPU has a very, very good competitor. And I just want to see how far we can push the A14 Bionic CPU. So this video is encompassing the best iPhone that you can get with the best processor to see how good of a job it does when it comes to extended gaming performance. Now, this video is nothing scientific, so we're not going to have any sort of thermometers or things to measure the surface temperature of the phone, nor do we have any FPS data. So if you're looking for a video like that, maybe this is not the one. This is more from a general layman's perspective of what we can see, as well as just benchmarks and how games perform on a regular basis. Something we can test though is the battery capacity. So when we're starting this test, the phone is at 85% and by the time we're done, I'm going to check once again to see how much of a decrement in battery it brings and maybe that gives you an idea of the battery capacity of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. But with that being said, let's get into the benchmark. The benchmark is a new thing that I want to throw in for gaming tests like this and it's basically a 20 loop cycle, one minute each, which basically strains out the CPU as well as GPU on any phone and sort of gives you an overall idea of how the phone would perform in extended gaming sessions. You can see it running on screen at the moment and once loop 4 or loop 5 is complete, you start to see inconsistent performance from the iPhone 12 Pro Max and frames start to drop massively and I feel like the combination of both is due to how the iPhone 12 Pro Max's temperature rises. So what I'm going to do is actually fast forward this test and show you guys all of it because I want to make this as fair as possible and then come back with the results of the phone. So once that test was complete, the benchmark, the iPhone 12 Pro Max gave me a stability score of 72% which even for the Exynos 990 processor, which is notoriously known for being one of the worst processors out there is still bad. I ran the same test on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra with the Exynos 990 and it gave me a better stability score than the A14 Bionic CPU on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is a big deal. Now, something I do want to point out is the FPS rate of the iPhone did start at a higher position. So it was at around 45 to about 43 FPS. But after the first few loops, it dropped to around 30 to 32 FPS. But something else that I want to mention, and it's not something that people might mention in their videos, is that once the test was completely done, so once we got the scores, the brightness of the iPhone 12 Pro Max was restricted. I thought that was the maximum brightness that you can do. And probably you can see me fumbling around with the phone to adjust the brightness of the phone to really show you guys what the test results were. But after a minute or two of fumbling around, the brightness automatically adjusted. And I feel like the iPhone is deliberately doing that because the temperature of the iPhone was so high after the test, after the benchmark, it restricted the amount of brightness that you can go up to. And once it started to cool down to a manageable temperature, it once again was able to raise the brightness to the maximum. That's something that's weird, but I really wanted to include this because I feel like if this is the case for high-end benchmarks, maybe the same could happen when you're gaming for an extended period of time. With gaming though, that really brings me on to the three games that I tested for this video. The first one was Genshin Impact and you see the same choppiness and performance that we saw on the iPhone 12 when things start to get intense. So sword swings are extremely laggy, not that great when it comes to an high-end gaming experience for sure, especially when you push the processor to its limits. And again, this is very disappointing considering this is the highest end smartphone processor according to Apple on the iPhone and just in general. So I don't know what's going on, whether that's the game or whether that's the actual processor, but it has to do with a combination of both for sure. The next game I tested was Ark Survival, which is decent. It's still not extremely smooth, but it's also a bit better than Genshin for sure, unless things start to get intense and then once again, the choppiness comes through. But again, these are games that people don't test on a regular basis and I really wanted to throw in all of these games. The last one being A3 Still Alive which shows frame drops when you're in high intensive situations, when in crowded scenarios and once again the frame drops are very similar to the one we saw with Genshin Impact. So again the iPhone 12 Pro Max may be the best smartphone when you want to play Asphalt 9 or Call of Duty Mobile for maybe 5 or 10 minutes but 
For serious hardcore gamers, those that play games for about 30 to 45 minutes, you're gonna start to see frame drops for sure. And with a 60 Hz panel on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it really isn't suited for gaming if you ask me. So as I said with the iPhone 12, I feel like the 12 Pro Max really misses the trick when it comes to gaming. Such a big display, still not the best when it comes to gaming performance just because of the refresh rate, but also tied in with the performance of the A14 Bionic CPU, which kind of has me disappointed and kind of has me looking forward to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 processor because I feel like that's going to be something that maybe rejuvenates gaming when it comes to smartphones and I'm really looking forward to trying it out once we start to see consumer smartphones running that processor. And as I said, when we started was 85%. At the end of the filming session, which was about 1 hour 15 minutes, the temperature was at 73%, which is about right. But as I said, gaming is a no-no on the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro Max and pretty much the iPhone 12 series. So that about wraps up this video. The results aren't the ones that I was expecting. While the M1 chipset on the Apple Mac series is absolutely phenomenal, the A14 Bionic CPU has something going on and I don't know how Apple plans on fixing this, maybe with a future update. That's something to keep in mind and I'm really looking forward, as I said, to the next generation of processors and seeing whether the same performance uh, dips are persistent. But thank you for watching, as I said. Do let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios!